Hi everyone, I'm Matt Shanahan with Train by Tex, and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, this video is going to cover Fiat Chrysler PowerNet. PowerNet is the newest uh, architecture that Chrysler is using. It's kind of the Fiat uh, identity, kind of moving away from the traditional uh, TIPM or FCM as the gateway. Um, it's kind of changing things up now. There was a need for uh, higher speed uh, bus for interior devices, and then they kind of moved away from the um, where we would connect with our scan tool to a gateway module, and that module would talk to the other modules. PowerNet has a 500 kilobits per second CAN C for powertrain and safety related items. And then the big change is where it has this 125 kilobit a second interior high speed bus. Uh, they call it high speed because it's high speed relative to other uh, protocols for interior stuff, but it is a low speed CAN, so the name can kind of be deceiving. Some cars are also going to have 125 kilobit per second low speed CAN for telematics. There still is a uh, LIN bus for some modules on this vehicle as well. The BCM is going to be the gateway and connect the various uh, networks to each other. However, we are going to connect directly with our scan tool to the various uh, CAN buses. So we are no longer going to be talking to a gateway. The BCM is the link between the, the different networks. These cars can be identified by the Uconnect 8.4 touchscreen in the dash. Here's kind of an a animation of the NAR, uh, network architecture. You can see the data link connector goes directly to some star connectors and those are uh, connected to all the modules on the various buses so you got your you know interior high speed bus over here and maybe your you know can see over here the only way that they're connected to each other is through the BCM which is again the gateway here is the Uconnect touchscreen so that's how these cars are easily identifiable um, just on a personal note, I do like this infotainment system on this car. It's kind of a nice system, and um, it just seems to work pretty well. So these star connectors, you'll be able to look up on a di uh, in the service information kind of where they're located. On this car is a Dodge Dart. You just pull this panel here, and in that panel, you'll find two of the star connectors. So one's for the interior high speed, and one's for the can C. So this is where all the modules are linked together. If you've done any GM diagnostics, uh, you probably you know have the splice pack. You probably used to have a splice pack and the comb. This is a little bit different. There's no sh shorting bar necessarily like that, that uh, GM. The nice thing is we can disconnect modules individually from each other from the start connector and still leave the other ones plugged in. Here's the can see star connector, and so we pull that down, and you can see this is these really small electrical pins, so you use like a deep pinning tool as a nice small needle to pop the connectors out. And this is the star connector off of the car. Here's kind of a side view. And me, I can't resist, I gotta take it apart and see what's inside. So you can see on the uh, insides, there's some circuit board here and uh, a couple other things going on. The termination resistors for the CAN buses are in the star connectors, so you still <clears throat> might have one on a module, but uh, the star connectors are usually going to house the termination resistors. So you can see down here is where you're going to have your termination resistors and a capacitor for noise. So there's your circuit board components, and you can see there's a 10 ohm resistor, and then here's your, they got two 60 ohm resistors wired in series to get the termination resistance. And then there's a capacitor to help reduce the noise. You could do a resistance check at the data link connector with your breakout box. So your can see is pin 6 and 14, just like your, you know, any other car. But you also can check resistance of the CAN bus directly at 3 and 11 
for the interior high speed on this car. One thing you're going to want to do is check to make sure that the buses are not shorted together. So you're going to want to go from 3 to 6, 3 to 14, and then uh, you know 11 to 6 and 11 to 14. And these should all be fairly high resistance. The ones that I've been checking are, you know, 4 kilo ohms or more, you know, somewhere usually around 10 kilo ohms. Here is checking a bus for uh, short to ground. So you would go to each of the four bus pins and leave your lead and ground. Kind of added a little bit to this and created my own, but Chrysler kind of has a chart to help you diagnose uh, CAN bus issues based on voltage. CAN bus diagnostics can be pretty intense when you really start to look. There's a lot of SAE papers out there about, um, you know, voltages, being able to identify which module based on the length of the run. There's tons of stuff out here, but this is a pretty good basic chart. So when your CAN high and low are sleeping, there should be zero volts on the line. And when you have a recessive one, which is a high ohmic resistance, you should be resting around 2.5 volts, just like any other CAN system. And then a dominant zero would be a low ohmic resistance, and you're going to see the CAN high pull up to 3.5, CAN low pull to around 1.5 volts. If you have a CAN high shorted to power, you know, again, this is kind of the chart. As you're measuring voltages, you're going to maybe try to figure out what's going on. If a CAN high is shorted to power, you're going to see, obviously, the power on the CAN high. And then you'll see something just a little bit less than B plus on the CAN low. So you can kind of go through this chart and some of it's in Chrysler service information and kind of help you determine if you have a short to ground, short to power, and if it's on CAN high or CAN low. Here is scope in the CAN C at the uh, data link connector and you can see two and a half to close to three and a half and one and a half close to two and a half. So um, you can see that communication there. Same thing at the interior high speed. So I did some research on a Dodge Dart 2013 and um, what I did is I shorted the can C bus to ground because that's really what we're starting to see quite a bit when we have network communication issues as is a module takes down the bus. So what I did is I, uh, I shorted um, the interior occupancy module <coughs> uh, to ground and we're going to see what takes a look and you're going to see how the star connectors make life's life a lot easier for us to diagnose this car. So we shorted it uh, to ground. It's kind of weird why I shorted it to ground initially. The car wouldn't shut off um, because, you know, the bus got taken out. So what I did is I shut the car off and then reshorted it again. And then we had a uh, crank, uh, no crank and no communication. So <coughs> we uh, checked for voltage at can see at the data line connector and both of them are stuck at zero volts and you know process of illumination you know we kind of do a full module scan and the only systems detected are the ones on the interior high-speed communication network so we definitely have a uh, probably a can see issue and obviously we know that because I just showed you where I shorted it but if we were diagnosing this car we kind of now know uh, where to kind of start. The BCM also has some communication codes in it as well and so what we can do now <clears throat> if this car was towed to your shop what we could do is start to um, pull connectors out until the car starts or starts to do something you know obviously if the PCM was the one pulling at the ground it was bad car probably still wouldn't start but you would see some changes with the key on some modules would be coming to life um, so in this case what I did is I just could disconnect a module at the start connector, try to start the car. If that didn't work, plug it back in, disconnect the next one. And then you could identify the wire colors once the car starts to the module and figure out which module may be the cause. So once I uh, finally disconnect one at a time until the car starts, we can see that we detect 15 modules and we have multiple CAN communication codes and you know just a kind of a long list of them and one of them is that we lost COM with the occupant module. So at this point we're going to clear the codes and start over and we're going to see much less codes and this time we still have an occupant classification module code present. So um, 
it's just an easy way to really identify which modules taken out the bus and uh, and great to diagnose with so then we just fixed it and now we got 16 modules detected so to summarize you know you're gonna have a can high and low speed network linked by the BCM as a gateway there's gonna be some LIN modules as well still and then the star connectors are a great diagnostic tool to diagnose communication problems and a nice thing for us again is the can C and the IHS can be accessed at the data link connector so all in my opinion pretty positive changes uh, for working on a Chrysler. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, look forward to making the next video.